Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Recently I had the pleasure of spending a day fishing with Randy Buchanan. Randy's one of the local fly tires from our area. Uh, big into doing the shows, you've seen him at the, you know, International Guild of Fly Tires and the Fly Fishing Show. Uh, he's always around those. Has a couple patterns that he's pretty famous for, or not famous for, but, you know, he's known for. Um, he does a lot of tie-in with larva lace. He's going to show us a mayfly pattern in this. Actually, it's a sulfur pattern, and uh, it's a really, really good looking pattern. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Just remember a few things that he points out in this. Um, substitution is key. You don't have stuff. We don't have larva lace here at the shop. What we do carry is um, stretch tubing. Works the exact same. So it has the same effect here. Um, so don't be afraid to substitute larva lace with stretch tubing. Uh, also, switch up the colors. You know, I always stress it. What works in our area may not work in your area. Um, maybe you want to do. He's going to do a two tone brown to rep represent a sulfur color. Um, try a olive and brown. You know, mess around that kind of stuff. Uh, also, it's a little bit difficult being in the shop and trying to run the camera and everything and talk and. So there's a couple spots in it where it gets a little blurry, so I apologize in advance for that. But um, what you will get to see a uh, really, really good looking fly, and you get to pick up the major parts out of it. So just be patient through the blurriness, and take a lot away from this video. I'm sure you're going to like it. Um, we're going to have a couple videos with him. This is going to be one of his, uh, probably th two or three at least, in a series of his flies that I'm sure you're going to love. And... Uh, probably have them back on later we had a lot of fun fishing that day even though weather wasn't the greatest didn't cooperate we caught a couple but i was gonna try getting someone filmed but the weather wasn't but wasn't good enough for getting the camera out so sit back and watch and uh thanks for watching everybody just remember we can get stuff to tie what you need here at the shop at holsingersflyshop.com and uh if you ever out at one of the shows and you see randy tie and make sure you stop and watch him he's he really knows his stuff. We're going to put a new twist on a pattern that's been around a long time, and that's uh, some of the older tires will remember tying woven body stone flies. We're going to do a woven body mayfly nymph, except we're going to use micro uh, tubing for the uh, weave. And we're going to add some flash to it, though, that you can't do with the... Uh, Embroidery, embroidery flosses. Yeah. Now we're going to try to we're going to use some olive thread here just to um, get everything tied down so we don't get a lot of bleed through of the black color of of the thread. And we're going to use some barbules off of the hen pheasant, whatever you want to use. This is a technique and not so much a pattern. You can, you can adjust this to uh, whatever pattern you'd like to tie. And a little trick I like to do is when most people in videos and stuff, when they tell you to tie in your tail on a dry fly or nymph, I don't care what it is, you t your tie-in point is above the uh, barb of the hook. And when you take your fingers away, the tail is too far down over the bend of the hook or cocked to one side or the other because when you tie like this, you can't see through your fingers. So what I've done over the years after measuring out the tail length that I want is I start my tail at mid shank and I wrap back to the barb holding the tailing material just slightly above the hook shank and stopping right at the barb. And each tail wrap then is wrapped perfectly back to center of the hook. And when I take my fingers away, it's right where I want it to be. All right, so we now have the tail on there. We're going to take some brown and some amber colored uh, micro tubing and the color you want for the belly, we're going to tie in 
on the back side of the hook. And we're going to run this back to the base of the tail on the back side of the hook. And we're going to bring, so we have one color in now. The color that we want for the back, which will be the darker of the colors, will be a brown. And we're going to tie it in on the front side of the hook. Now, we all know that hooks are round, but as tires, we've always referred to them as four-sided objects, the front side, the back side, the, the uh, top and bottom. And here again, then, once I have that tied in, and it's tied being on the flat on both sides of the hook, front and back, it gives you a little bit of a flat surface. We're going to take a piece again of the flashaboo, and here again, because it's a synthetic, cut it on a sharp angle that eliminates some of the bulk in your tie-in point. And we're going to run this up, and we're going to run the flashaboo up over this. Flashaboo mylar tinsel, pearl mylar tinsel is the same stuff as that, yeah. pretty much. So. Like I said, like he said earlier, it's not about getting exactly what I say it all the time in my videos. It's not about using exactly what I have in the videos. It's about finding something close to it. You're learning the techniques over learning to fly. Substitution has always been a, a great uh, part of fly tying. So you use what you have, yep. okay? But we're looking for something, and you can see in the video there that. You can see the shine of the crystal flash on there. Now, when you weave, you need to get rid of your tying thread. So, throw a couple half inch or whip finish in, and we're going to get rid of that thread. Okay? Now, when I was taught to weave by Phil Camera on a pattern known as the River Witch, Phil was great at telling everybody that you turn the vise towards yourself to weave. Right. Okay? And then he went like this and turned Oops, it. Hold on. Let me. Okay, let's see if we can pick it up with the camera here. And he turned the vise towards the customer. And I looked at Phil and I says, Phil, I thought you said you turned it towards yourself. <laughs> he says, at home you do, but at shows people want to see what you're doing. So you turn it, so you learn to weave backwards. <laughs> So we're going to turn this one, and hopefully I remember how to do this. Because I have it, I usually weave at home with it towards myself, but here for the show we're going to do that. And you only work with the belly color. In this case, which is the lighter of the two colors, and you take it over top. And all we're doing is a simple overhand weave. We're making an overhand knot, and we're slipping the back color up over top of the eye of the hook and we want to bring the first wrap back at the base of the tail on bare hook so that we have a little bit of a taper and we eliminate some of the bulk in the fly. And you always know which piece you're weaving working with because if you were weaving this with the same color the part you're working with is always going to point up I don't know if you can see it, but it's always going to be up. So here again, we're going to take this back over top of the belly over top of the back. And split your knot. Oops. And we're going to do one or two this way. And then just to speed the process up, I'm going to turn the vise back towards myself and we get this done. I'm having a hard time with the lighting here. Okay. And you always want to pull up and out. and you, It'll take quite a bit of pressure, but you have to be careful that you don't break it. And over the years, I did break it, and I did learn how to fix it. So if it does break on you, you can fix it. And I've also learned how to change colors in the weave. Mm. So 
just by cutting it off or when I did break it off one time I put another color in just right. to see what would happen. So you can do it and one more time and then we're going to turn this around and we'll finish this fly up a little bit quicker when so I could see what we're what I'm doing. So you're just tying an ever hand knot underneath the hook and then you're separating that knot, the hole in the knot, and sliding that through the eye, pulling it back and tying it down. Okay, so, and you'll see what it looks like when we get done here, but we're going to turn this around so I can get this fly done. Actually, you can see it kind of good there how when he slips that knot over it. And uh, we're just working it the whole way up, covering up that mylar. And uh, this is actually, I'm going to have to do these because that's a little flashy looking fly. I fit right in in my box. Now tying it the way I am, it's uh, a lot of people will take this and fish it as a sulfur nymph. Oh, that would using, be good, good using colors. A dark a brown for the back and amber for the belly. Alright, now we're back on here and we have the body finished up through. You can see the shine of the uh, flashaboo underneath and we have to reattach the tying thread now. And we're going to go to black thread right now. Or you can go to whatever color you, that will complement um, the fly. So we're going to use black just because we started out with an olive, which was very subtle underneath, and we're going to go to black. Pull these two strands of your body material now out towards the eye of the hook and tie them off. And get rid of them. Now, we need to put a wing case on here. You can, I'm going to use. Um, a piece of turkey tail and I've always heard people having a lot of problems with wing cases splitting on their mayfly nymph patterns. Two things, tie the wing case in by the tip of the feather, not by the butt of the feather that came where you cut it close to the quill. That's thicker and it's going to split more often. So you want to use the soft tip end. And bring your thread then back up to halfway between where your abdomen is here and where in you're going to finish the fly. Bring the thread halfway up and tie this in there. Don't tie it in right against the butt base of your abdomen and wrap back onto it and wrap up onto the weave one or two turn uh, body segments up on there. And what you do there is reminiscent of taking your fingers and if you squeeze it, this is your wing case material and if you tie it in right at the base of the abdomen where most people would you gather all these fibers up like this and you narrow them down. But if you tie them at mid shank of your thorax, sure, you're going to gather them down, but as you wrap back on them, it becomes more broad. Right. Okay? And that broadness then is just like your hand. When you want that to fold over, that's how it's going to fold over then. And we're going to use some red squirrel since that's what's out here. And like I said, this is the best animal that was ever invented for fly tying. Obviously somebody knew what they were doing when they invented a red squirrel. But we need some legs on here first. Let's put some legs on. We're going to take a body feather from a ring neck hen here. And I'll show you here in a moment what we're going to do. We prepared this feather to look like that, okay? And a lot like what we did for the soft hackles, 
we're going to fold back some barbules that we want for the legs and cut this off. Just here again, it just looks like what we would have done for the uh, soft hackles. But that point now changes that we're going to tie that in right on top of our abdomen, okay? And now we're going to build up the abdomen with some red squirrel fur. And you're going to have a really buggy abdomen with red squirrel fur to begin with. So you're going to have a lot of movement in this thorax portion of the fly. Lots of guard hairs come through on that. It gives you a really buggy look. Yeah, you, you can't tie a pretty fly with red squirrel. And it's also another benefit to it is it's short hair, so it's great for a yeah. lot of the smaller flies. Now, we're going to pull that barbules from the leg feather that we tied in straight up over the thorax. Oops, I just broke it. We're not going to tell anybody. Okay, and then when you fold your wing case over, don't pull it down over the eye of the hook. Pull it parallel to the hook shank and take your tying thread and gently go over top and let the weight of the bobbin go down and set your wing case and do that twice or so and you won't have, you can see there, that wing case didn't split. You'll never have another split wing case again. For the garbage chair and, and tie this off. And that is a great looking little sulfur pattern like you were saying earlier. Great great colors for our area especially. There's a little bit darker but not too much. Now this one that I tied here for the camera is a size 12. But I've tied them down to 14s and 16s also. And using that same technique you could take a grub hook and tie a caddis larva pattern with the same technique as the weave. Except you wouldn't need to put all the, right. the tail or the legs on it. You would just put some kind of head on there. Yeah, you do, do a bead. And yeah, you could do a wing bud system right. on it, whatever. Yep. But you could see the shine through there of the weave. Yep. And Boy, that's a nice looking you're fly. You're going to have a fly that moves. It's going to be alive in the water. So. Well, thanks again for another good pattern, Randy. Mm -hmm.